now. And we begin tonight with breaking news in the Preston Lord murder case. Tonight, the Maricopa County Attorney's Office has confirmed that prosecutors will not seek the death penalty against the three suspects who were eligible for it in the case. A spokesperson for the county attorney tells 12 News they did not file a notice of intent to seek the death penalty for the three suspects who were adults at the time of the incident. The other defendants weren't eligible for the death penalty because they were under the age of 18. 12 News will continue to follow this case closely, so be sure to stay with 12news.com for the latest updates. New tonight, a woman thought that she won a massive cash prize giveaway only to see her accounts wiped out as she became another victim of a common scam. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us for 12 News at 10. I'm Kariba Devine. And I'm Mark Curtis. Tonight, investigative and consumer reporter Katie Wilcox brings us this cautionary tale and shows just how hard it is to get the money back. Thousand dollars a day for life. It's one of the most famous Ooh, names in giveaways. Thousand dollars from Publishers Clearinghouse. Clearing wow. A prize that seems like easy money. I'll take a chance, baby. I could win something for my girls, you know. Until the contest and those who enter. You have emerged as a winner. Become easy targets. I just say I just got excited, you know. I didn't. I didn't immediately it went and and it, drew out money. I started drawing money and, strong, and started paying. Yeah. Money. Anna Martinez was told she'd won a million dollar prize, and then she started making payments. But if you're winning money, why give money? Well, number one, they had mentioned that it was the IRS. These scam artists, they sound very legitimate. They make up all these reasons. You know, you have to send IRS money now. There's a customs fee. There's a tax. Chris Irving is vice president of consumer and legal affairs at Publishers Clearinghouse. We would never ask for any money to collect that prize. It's, it's not free. It's not from Publishers Clearinghouse. It's not real, and it's a scam. It's a scam that's now so common. Scammers. Publishers Clearinghouse can't warn customers enough. We can't respond to each and every complaint because truly we receive thousands and thousands and thousands of complaints. Elsie Kapler works for the Bureau of Consumer Protection for the Federal Trade Commission. But what we do is use those complaints to spot trends, to identify bad actors, to identify new kinds of scams. And then we use that to build our cases. So it was an elaborate against scheme. our seniors. Despite all these warnings, complaints, and investigations, this scam is still too easy to pull off. And that's in part because it's so easy for bad actors to get information about you. When you enter a contest, you give your name, your address, your phone number, and a quick online search shows that doesn't always stay private. If you go online right now and you search sweepstakes files, that there are third parties that are selling information about consumers that have sent money to find out about sweepstakes, not from Publishers Clearinghouse. And there are these third parties that very often and easily can sell data to anybody without any clearance, without any safeguard. We don't know how the men that scammed Anna got her information, but they kept her on the phone. And, and they're horrible. Really, and the way they say things, you know, like we're not- Using common and convincing tactics, they got Anna to send wire transfers and then gift cards, raising red flags for her friend Jessica. And I said, why, you're lying to her. 12 News tried to reach all the men who called, texted, or accepted Anna's wire transfers. But they may have used fake names and numbers. We didn't get a call back. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Leaving Anna wondering if she'll ever get the money back. What are the chances she's gonna get the money back? Hard to know what the chances are, but here's my advice to anyone get on the horn immediately. Sometimes that can be reversed. It's an uphill battle with devastating consequences. She showed me her bank statement and it said that at the very top of the month, it said, it said 23,000 something something. And then it said down at the end of the, end of the month, it said a dollar six. You have a dollar? Six cents in her account. Mm -hmm. Altogether, Anna lost nearly $30,000. Still, the calls kept coming in. Excuse me, you are not taking the last of her money. You're not. And guys, look, these callers were so aggressive. This is just one of the texts that Anna received trying to get even more money from her. The man says the IRS is out of the way, so let's stop messing around. It's this kind of abusive and urgent language that's a major red flag. If you're being pressured to act now, that's another sign of a scam. Yeah, Katie, it's just devastating. And, you know, they're throwing all these legit things out like IRS and the publisher's clearinghouse. You can see how someone could easily be fooled by these scammers. But, 
You know, what other things, what other key warnings do people and their family members need to know about how these scams are happening? Right. I mean, the first thing is to know when to hang up because it's a scam. The FTC will tell you that gift cards are for gifts, not for payment. Never send a wire transfer to someone you don't know and never pay for the prize. The prize is free. Right now on 12news.com, you can find a report um, where, to, where to send your reports for these kind of scam calls and help investigators stop the next one. I'll also note that we heard about this story from a viewer reaching out to us. So if you have a story tip, just send us an email to connect at 12news.com. Mark. Katie, hopefully this will save at least one person from becoming another victim. Thank you. Meanwhile, school officials in Paradise Valley are warning families tonight about an email scam that's targeting students and parents. District officials sent a letter to parents warning them about the scam. They say folks have been getting emails that appear to be from Paradise Valley schools asking for money or donations. Officials are warning not to click on any links in the emails, and they say you should immediately delete the message and report it through your email program. They add that the district would never use district email to solicit donations. Developing right now, crews are battling a brush fire in Avondale. Sky 12 is over the scene near Southern and El Mirage Road. Investigators say the fire is burning in a wash. The good news is the flames are not threatening any homes or buildings. We'll continue to monitor the fire. You can look for the latest updates right here on 12 News. In some other news tonight, a man has been sentenced to 40 years in prison for sexually assaulting an ASU student in 2021. Eric Bell was found guilty in April. The student reported being grabbed from behind while walking to work. Bell then forced her down to the ground, assaulted her, and then made her count to 50 while he ran away from the scene. As part of the sentencing, Bell is also required to register as a lifetime sex offender. Well, now to a story you'll only see here on 12 News. We know that living in the valley, you've probably come across some of our desert wildlife. Rattlesnakes, javelina, mountain lions, you name it. But a Mesa woman had a run-in with a creature you would never expect to see here. 12 News journalist Chase Golightly is in the neighborhood tonight where she found it. And Chase, a pretty strange discovery, especially on dry land. Mark, that's right, and that's putting it lightly. Believe it or not, this is what she saw just crawling on the sidewalk right where we're standing. It's a crawfish or crayfish or crawdad, whatever you want to call them. They're all the same thing. And the Arizona Game and Fish tells us that they are here in the valley. I don't hear it either. Is it playing? Gotcha, I guess the, the crawfish got in the way of that. We're still working on those issues. But yeah, she said that she found this just yesterday walking her dog, but here's what exactly she had to say. It's the last thing Dondia Davies expected to see on her morning walk with her dog. I just saw the crayfish walking on the sidewalk. She found it near Mesa Drive and Broadway in Mesa. Needless to say, it was a shock. I didn't even think they lived here, honestly. She doesn't know exactly how it got here, but knew she couldn't just leave this little guy. I thought that it wasn't going to have any chance of surviving, so I picked it up and brought it home. Thinking she would drop it off at a nearby pond on her way to work. But then once her kids learned about it, and then he just ended up staying. <laughs> His name is Nathan. Kaylin Drago named him. He looked like a Nathan. Sounds about right. Completely a joke and I fell in love. And tells us Nathan is pretty friendly. When I first saw him, like he would let me pet him. But he does get a little feisty. Oh, ouch. So how did Nathan get here? Arizona Game and Fish spokesperson Alexandra Flickinger says while crawfish are not native to Arizona and considered an invasive species, they were brought here a long time ago and grew out of control. Now they're in several of our reservoirs and streams and, and rivers. Including the major rivers leading into the valley, with some coming up through people's irrigation when watering their yards or even getting caught in local ponds and canals. So crayfish are present. It's just not common to find them walking down the street. While we may never know how Nathan ended up on the street, we do know he has found his forever home. 
Arizona Game and Fish also told me that it is possible that someone fished out the crayfish and brought it here and it somehow escaped. Now that is illegal to do unless you have a fishing permit. The other key is that you can't transport crayfish alive when you're bringing them home. We're live in Mesa, Chase Cole Whiteley, 12 News. All right, now we have to be on the lookout for crayfish too, including all of our desert critters as well. All right, Chase, thank you. Well, tonight the Scottsdale City Council approved a rate hike for city services, including water, sewer, and trash. So under the plan, the average home will see their water bill increase by about $2 a month. Garbage and recycling rates would also go up by another $2. And then sewer fees would increase by $1.15. Now, this is the fifth straight year the city has increased either water or sewer fees. The city says that the changes are needed to keep up with the higher operating costs.